guys, welcome back to Astro Ace. Last episode, we learned about the 10 relationships or interactions between the seasons and the 10 heavenly stems. That's the basic concept that leads to what we're going to talk about today, the 12 chi phases. Chi phases should be the official translation. Some people call it the 12 chi stages or the 12 life phases or the 12 growth phases or the 12 stages of growth. There are all existing translations and they're all talking about the same thing, which is the relationship between the 12 types of earthly branches and the heavenly stems element. What does each earthly branch mean to the heavenly stem element? Most of the time, what you see in the online chart generator, they'll list out the day master's chi phases only. But once you've learned all the chi phases, you can check out other heavenly stems that you have, or the 10 years lot pillars stems you have, or whatever stem that you have. What's the relationship between the stems and the earthly branches? Now let's start with the name of these two phases. Now, unlike the last episode, these names are actually from reliable sources. Of course, there are a few versions of the translation. I'll explain to you one by one. So when you come across different translations, you know what it means. First one, birth. This is the first phase of the cycle of life. First, you have to be born. After being born, you go for a bath. It's like in the Western countries, you have christening. So bath is the second phase of life. Next one is attire, or some people translate it to wearing hat. It means you're a teenager. Now you have to dress properly. Next one is coming of age or arriving officer. It means you've grown up now. You're qualified to have a job, to have a title. The one after that is prosperity peak or imperial prosperity means you've reached the peak of your life, the most successful period of your life. This is the highest point you can have. Starting from this point, your curve of life is going down. So the next one is aging or retiring. You've worked your whole life and now you need to take it easy. The one after that is sickness or illness means your body had enough of wear and tear, it's time to go downhill. And the one after that is death. Death has come to collect you. And the next one is tomb or grave. After you died, you get to put into the tomb. And after that one is repose. Some people call it extinct, but I prefer the word repose. You're resting. We won't forget about you. And the one after that is womb. You're reincarnated. And the one after that is gestation. You're growing and getting ready to be born again. And the next one, of course, we're back to the first one, birth. This is like a curve of life. Going from low to up and to the peak and down to the bottom again. And yet, it's more like a circle rather than a line. It's a circle of the different phases in life. So these are the names. Now let's take a look at the interactions. Here we need to highlight a few very important phases. Birth, coming of age and prosperity peak, death, and tomb. Let's highlight these five important phases. Now last episode, we gave the example of spring. Spring is wood. So wood is the prosperity of spring. Here is the same. Again, let's use young wood as an example. To young wood, the highest peak you can get in your life is tiger and rabbit. Tiger and rabbit are wood. So there are young woods coming of age and prosperity peak. There are young woods peak in this life cycle. Now in this life cycle, there's rule. The rule is, if it's a yang element, it goes clockwise. If it's a yin element, it goes counterclockwise. Yang wood is yang element. It goes clockwise. 
So if tiger and rabbit are men of age and prosperity peak, then that means pig is the birth of young wood. And what's inside of pig's hidden stems? Young wood. You see, that's how you remember the hidden stems. Now let's move on. Rat is young wood's bath. Both pig and rat are water. Water supports the tree to grow. Starting from dragon, the tree goes downhill. Dragon is young wood's aging. Then the snake is sickness. Horse is death. Now the tree just died. Young wood just died. After it died, it got put into a tomb. So after young wood died, who comes alive? Yin wood. So yin wood is in young wood's tomb. That's why yin wood is goat's hidden stem. And goat is yin wood's storehouse. It collects and builds up the energy of yin wood in there once young wood is dead. And the rest of them are repose, warm, and gestation, which are monkey, rooster, and dog. The metal cuts the tree down, and that's the end of Young Wood's story. Same story goes to Young Fire, Young Metal, and Young Water. Next story is Yin Wood. Yin Wood is the opposite of Young Wood. Now the animals move counterclockwise, instead of going. It's this direction. We're going like this. Now, don't ask me why the words are written on the opposite way, because I'm lazy. I didn't want to type all the words again, so I did a horizontal flip, and I'm pretty sure you understand it as well as the other way around. Okay, so yin wood, same as yang wood. Tiger and rabbit are men of age and prosperity peak. They just swapped position. They are at the peak of yin wood as well. Now moving counterclockwise, aging is ox, sickness is rat, death is pig. Now yin wood died in pig. When yin wood dies, who comes to life? Yang wood again. So pig is birth for yang wood. Pig has young wood as hidden stem. After death, yin wood got buried in dog, so dog is tomb. Then rooster is repose, monkey is womb, and goat is gestation. This is yin wood story. The same story goes to yin fire, yin metal, and yin water. Now you may notice I didn't mention about yang earth and yin earth. Well, surprisingly. Yang Earth has the faces the same as Yang Fire, and Yin Earth has the same faces as Yin Fire, because Earth in earthly branches is the transition element, and they are the storehouses for the other four elements. So, according to the twelve Qi faces, I hope you find it so much easier to remember the hidden stems in each earthly branch. And now, if you look at about the chart. You find these words under the earthly branches so clear and understandable. Now you won't look at your charts, and when you see a death here and think, "Oh shit, am I gonna die here?" Or you won't go to your ten years luck pillar and find your death, thinking you must have to die when it comes to this pillar. No, it's the energy of each branch. It shows how much it can impact the day master. Whenever you see a birth or a bath or an attire coming of age or prosperity peak, you know this element has more impact to your day master. While whenever you see there's aging, sickness, death, tomb, repose, womb, etc., you know this element has less impact to your day master. And not only the day master. Say like you have a wealth element on your heavenly stem. You want to know how the earthly branches can impact your wealth element. Then you have to count from the wealth element perspective. It all depends on which element you want to look at. But please don't rely a hundred percent on chi phases and forget about the main chart analysis, because the main chart analysis is like the main course of your meal. 
qi faces is like seasoning or the side dish. It shouldn't take over your attention from the chart reading itself. You shouldn't consider the qi faces before you can fully understand your chart. Okay guys, that's all for today. If you want to have your personal chart reading with me, you can email me at astroways.info at gmail.com or find me on Facebook at Astroways. If you like my video, please give me a thumbs up. If you want to know more about metaphysics, please subscribe my channel and I'll keep you updated.